Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I'll show you how our AI synthetic data engine works. In just three easy steps, you're able to convert synthetic sensitive data into synthetic data with up to 99% similarity. Firstly, upload the data set. Secondly, automatically train the AI model and generate synthetic data. And lastly, receive a report on the utility and privacy of synthetic data. Today, we'll be looking at a commonly analyzed data set on Kaggle. So this data set was created by a consumer credit card company that was facing the problem of customer attrition. They wanted to analyze the data to find out more about the reason behind this to predict customers who are likely to drop off. So over in this data set, we can see that there are all kinds of different types of variables. There are integers, such as client number or customer's age. There is people's names. There are dates and there are other categorical information such as attrition flag, is it an existing or a treated customer? And there are also other category information such as gender or educational level. So we can see that there's a lot of data here that is sensitive and could possibly personally identify the person. Coming over to our synthetic data engine, the very first step is to upload a CSV file from our computer. Next, we will preview the data just to see it's okay. So this looks exactly the same as the data set which we just saw. And lastly, we will visualize the data schema. So the data schema just helps us to understand the different types of data that is inside the data set, such as client number, it's an integer, uh, such as our customer age is an integer, or attrition flag, which is categorical. Over here, you might be wondering, why are all the names John Doe? This is to showcase one of the features that we have here. We can choose to replace a column with randomly generated fake data. This is usually done to mask any personal identifiers like names or IDs. So here I would replace the original name column that has all John Doe's and replace it with randomly generated names. So we can choose any of these different masks from fake license plate numbers to fake company names to fake geolocations. So the next step is to train the synthetic data generation model that takes anywhere from 30 minutes to three hours. I've done it in the interest of time. Now let's generate some synthetic data samples. So we can see that 10,000 rows of synthetic data is being generated and all of the data is very similar to the original data with exception of the names, which we can see that in this column, all of the names are randomly generated compared to the original John Doe. Next, we will see some charts and metrics for the data quality and the data privacy of the synthetic data being generated. So this will take some time to generate. Let's just go right to the report to see how it looks like. So first in this report, we will see the data schema and we can also see an overall statistical score as well as an overall correlation score, both of which is above 90%, so this is good. Over here, we can see the distributions of each of the columns or each of the variables of the synthetic data compared to the real data. And we can see that they are very similar distributions. Let's say for customer age, for the real data that's in blue, there is this distribution. And for the fake data, there is a similar distribution. And this goes the same for the rest of the variables as well. To be realistic, synthetic data has to also capture the complex relationship between variables, such as the income category should be well correlated with the credit limit, because the higher the income bracket, the higher the credit limit. And we can see that for both the real and the synthetic data, the correlation charts are similar, which means that the AI model has accurately replicated the characteristics of the original data set. Lastly, on privacy, we will make sure that there is no overlapping roles between the real and synthetic data. And in this case, it's zero. So this is good. Our synthetic data is privacy safe. Next, I'll go through two additional features of our synthetic data engine. With the use of our conditional generation model, we're able to skew the distribution of our data set to improve its quality, such as for data imbalances or bias correction. Let's see how this can be done in our software. 
we can see that there is an imbalance between the existing customers and the interested customers with a low number of interested customers. So we balance the data set by generating more variations of interested customers' profiles. Generally speaking, this is useful for rare cases in data sets. Next, I'll show you how we can correct biasness in our data set. Despite a similar number of males and females in the data set, there is a bias towards males having a higher income category. So we can see that in the lowest income category of less than 40,000, there are three times the number of females than males. This is problematic because this bias data could be used to train an AI model down the road that inaccurately assumes that males have a higher income and perhaps assign a higher credit score to males. So we correct this bias in the data set by generating an equal amount of males and females in each of the different income categories. Next, we will generate some metrics for data quality and data privacy to see how this turns out. Switching back to the report, we can see now that the bias has been removed and the gender and the income level is no longer correlated compared to the original data set. Now that you understand how our engine works, you can try our demo by uploading your data set to this link below and you will receive a synthetic data set and the utility and privacy metric report just like what you have seen sent to your email.